A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Dema <coughs> now, as he was going along, approaching Damascus, suddenly a bright light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and through his uh, and though his eyes were opened, he could see nothing. So he, so they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go into the street called Straight. At the, and at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment, he is praying. He has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard many from many about this man, how much evil he has done in your, to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said, Go, for he is an instrument who I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and his sight was restored. He got up and was baptized. After taking some food, he regained his strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Revelation of St. John. Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders a lamb standing as if it had been slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell before the lamb, each holding a harp and a golden and, and golden bowls full of incense, which are prayers of the saints. They sing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open the seals, for you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom of priests, serving our God, and they will reign on earth. Then I looked, and I heard a voice of many angels surrounding the throne. And the living creatures and the elders, they numbered myriads and myriads and thousands and thousands, singing with full voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing, To the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for us.
the Lord be with you. And, and also with, with you. you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. He showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we'll go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you'll find some. So they cast it. And now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes for he was naked and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you've just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let's pray. Risen Savior, Master of our lives, Lover of our souls, come to us in the sharing of your word. Meet us in the upper room of our hearts and fill us with your love. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you ever been having one of those days where you just wish that you could go back to bed or better yet that you could never gotten out of bed and then something totally fantastic happens and it just turns everything around at least for that day if not for the week or the month or the year or a lifetime, at least for that day. And, and you wonder how you could have ever possibly been going along the way you had been before that happened. Because now the world has changed. That's what we're talking about today. John has been given this vision on the Lord's Day. He's on the Isle of Patmos. He's, he's imprisoned there because of the faith. And as part of the vision that the Lord gives him, he sees in what, we, is what precedes what we read today from the Revelation, he sees a lamb. He sees the one seated on the throne, and in the right hand of the one on the throne is the scroll that is closed, locked, and sealed. There's writing on the inside and writing on the outside, and, and there's lament in heaven because no one can open it until the Lamb comes along. John 
weeps in heaven because no one can open the scroll. And one of the elders leans over and says, no, 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 no. The one who has triumphed, the Lion of Judah, the Lamb of God, that is the one who can open the scroll. And the Lamb comes and takes the scroll, and we read what we read today from the Revelation. And I wanted to share this. I saw between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders a lamb standing as if it had been, as if it had been slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth. And he went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And then they sang. They sang because the victory is about to be shared. And they sang, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign on earth. The reality of heaven comes in upon our lives. Just as John saw it, so we know it to be true. It comes into our lives and changes everything. Not just for a day, not just for that week, not just for that month or year or that lifetime, but for all eternity. The early fathers of the church referred to the resurrection of Jesus as the eighth day of creation and how true that is because his resurrection literally has changed everything that we know and that we see and that we hear and that we count on have faith in it made the elders sing and then later on Myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands sing, Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive wealth and power and wisdom and might and blessing. To the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. I wish sometimes that we could see as John was given to see, what is going on in heaven. Because it would change so much of how we approach this life in this world. But we do get a glimpse. Saul is riding along to Damascus. He's been persecuting the church. He gets this letter from the chief priest to go to the synagogues of Damascus and root out all of this heresy or what he calls heresy and the glory of heaven in the person of Jesus stops him in his path and says Saul why are you persecuting me and isn't it interesting that Jesus doesn't say why are you persecuting my church he says why are you persecuting me because we are the body And it does change Saul's day, Saul's week, that month, that year, and the rest of his lifetime, and all of eternity for him, because he becomes Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles, that goes out and shares the good news and, and doesn't let anything get in his way. Nothing. And then the seven disciples that are gathered by the Sea of Tiberias, otherwise known as the Sea of Galilee. They've seen Jesus twice by this point, post-resurrection. And they're sitting around, and, and they begin to sound like a bunch of teenagers. You can just picture them, like, you know, flopped down on a sofa in the living room or something, or in the family room, watching television, and Peter turns to the rest of the guys and says, you know what, I'm going fishing. Yeah, we'll go with you. Let's do it. 
yeah, man. And so they go. And without Jesus, their labor is fruitless. And with Jesus, it's amazing. When I get to heaven, the name by which I hope that Jesus will call me is child. I, I'm so envious of these disciples that are in the boat. And Jesus calls out their children, you have no fish, have you? I want to hear him call me his child. I want to hear it from his lips. I want to be numbered in this group. And he says, cast the net on the other side, and they do. And, and slowly, heaven begins to break in on their reality in the person and in the glory again of Jesus. And John realizes, because he, put, he, he puts two and two together first, he, he realizes that, that this is a miracle, and he connects it with what has just been said by Jesus on shore, and he turns to Peter and he goes, it's the Lord! He's here again. Peter puts on some clothes, jumps in the water, swims, impetuous Peter. And then the rest bring the haul in, in the boat. And here is Jesus caring for them, breaking into their reality with the power of his resurrection. And reminding them that they need him. Not by, you know, pointing fingers or wagging fingers or lecturing or, you know, hauling out their Bible or his Bible and beating on it. But by, by feeding them. By being there with them. By talking with them. By allowing them to see yet another glimpse of the real reality, the reality that John saw. C.S. Lewis has often been quoted, and he's, he's so right when he said this, or wrote it, I don't know which, that in terms of the life we live here, we need to recognize that real life hasn't yet begun for us. Real life is what's going on in heaven. This is a mist compared to the glory and the life that we will experience in the presence of Jesus through all eternity. So the question for us this morning is, how do we live with that reality? Knowing it's there, but not always seeing it every day of the week. Well, we know that there's one day that we see it. It's on the Lord's Day as we gather to receive the very body and blood of Jesus. He invades this world. Heaven comes down, rests upon the altar, and is given to us. When we receive communion, just imagine Jesus saying to us, you have no bread, do you, children? You have no wine. Here, receive me. We look perhaps in all the wrong places as we go through our week, but heaven is constantly invading earth. Each time we seek the Lord in prayer, in, in reading his word, in reaching out to those who don't know him, heaven is invading earth. if we look for it, right? And sometimes it's difficult to do that when we've got our to-do lists and this is going wrong and that is going wrong and this is going halfway right and, and we are so bound by our circumstances. Had an experience Friday morning that was just so wonderful. 
sat in a meeting and uh, the warden at our prison was outlining some things that uh, she wants to see happen. And prior to her saying this, all I could see are the problems. Following it, I see the possibilities. Jesus is invading our lives to lift our eyes from our circumstances to his possibilities. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, teach us to search for you. Teach our ears, our eyes, our hearts, our minds to be attuned to your voice, speaking through us and in us, to us, wherever and whenever we may find ourselves too attached to whatever is going on around us. Call to us, Lord Jesus. We are your children. We ask this in your holy and precious name. Amen. invite you to stand as you're able. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In joy and hope, let us pray to the Father. That our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection, we pray to the Father. Father, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the good news of Easter, we pray to the Father. Father, Father hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. that he may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love, we pray to the Father. 
Father, hear our prayer. That he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter, we pray to the Father. Father, hear our prayer. That by his power, war and famine may cease through all the world, we pray to the Father. Father, hear our prayer. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, to comfort and strengthen, strengthen them, we pray to the Father. Father, Father hear our prayer. prayer. That according to his promises, all who have died in the faith of the resurrection may be raised on the last day, we pray to the Father. Father, hear our prayer. that he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, enabling us to bear through faithful witness to his resurrection, we pray to the Father. Father, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as his death has recalled us to life, so his continual presence in us may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Beloved, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Coming to the holy table, let us remember these words. The Son of Man is betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days later, after being killed, he will rise again. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God Almighty, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of heaven. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to share, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever.
Receive, O oh Lord, these gifts presented by your people for the work of your church. Amen. invite you to stand as we return our thanks to the Lord. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. 
We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Mary and Blessed Martha of Bethany, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Beloved, the gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. the body of Christ, the bread. 